Ooh, there's fish. That's a nice one too. Big trout. All right, so today I'm gonna go over some features of lakes that I look for when ice fishing to find big trout. Now, almost all the ice fishing lakes that I target for big trout have several things in common, and I wanted to go over some of those features today. And the first and probably most obvious one is that it needs to be a very productive lake. So generally, I'm actually looking for smaller, shallower lakes that um, have a lot of net productivity. They obviously need that deep hole for fish to survive through the winter and not get winter kill. But um, if you have big, extensive flats of weed beds, uh, that contributes to the net productivity of the lake during the summertime because all of that vegetation is going undergoing photosynthesis and that supports an abundance of phytoplankton and plankton and invertebrates which is the food for these big trout Ooh. there you go gorgeous and brookie all right we'll get her going there she goes I think there's another fish on the grass, so let's see if we can get back down there. Um, another thing I always look for is lightly pressured lakes. Now, uh, there's a couple ways to find lightly pressured lakes. One, they are either going to be hiking. Um, so if they're challenging to, ooh, there's fish. Oh, it's another big buck. Now, if they're going to be challenging to access, that's going to eliminate a lot of your sort of meat anglers who just want to come in and harvest their limit every day, which is fine. That's their right, and they can do that by law. But everybody doing that eliminates these large trout. So if you can get to these lakes that are less pressured, tend to be isolated, either a long way from big cities, um, hike in, or generally smaller, difficult to access lakes, uh, that's generally gonna be better in terms of finding these large trout. Big pretty buck. There he goes. All right. Now, another thing I really like to encourage, especially if you find these big trout lakes, and there are actually a number of them, you just have to work to find them. And no, I generally I'm more opposed to sharing where they're at just because so many anglers or meat anglers when it comes to trout is to practice catch and release because then you can come back to these lakes and catch these big trout that hold over year after year. <laughs> hey, look at these one. Some big fish in this lake. And they always are shallow. Ooh, gotta tire him out a little bit. Woo, he's as big as a steelhead, but I can't get his head turned this way right now. So I don't want to pressure it. Just got a tiny little scud fly on there. You can put your rod tip down in there to prevent the line from rubbing, and that will help uh, prevent it from breaking off. If he's running out parallel, especially in shallow water like this, <laughs> Cannot get him turned. The big fish. Oh, almost had his head up through here. Almost had it. If you can get their head up through here, then they can swim up onto the top of the ice. But you don't want to force it because tiny hooks. Big girl. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. Almost had it. I don't want to pull too much pressure straight up. There we go. That's what I'm after. <laughs> Look at the size of that fish, guys. That is a tank. That is a tank. Look at that. That's why I come to these low pressure lakes, man. For fish like that. It's a big one, big buck. There he is. That's a huge buck. Nice. Yeah, so not having that pressure helps to reduce harvest rate. Whoa, this guy just swam up out of that hole. Look at the size of this buck. Holy cow. He just come up right through the hole. He's like, I want to swim on top. Boom. 
Let's get that big boy back in the water. There he goes. Whew, my hands are cold getting wet like that. I'm gonna have to put the gloves on and take them off with each fish. There's a fish. Come on, take it. Oh, there we go. Ooh, that's a big butt. <laughs> he came straight up now. <laughs> that's so weird how they... <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> nice fish right there. Get him back going. Man, this guy does not understand holes very well. Now today I'm actually fishing in just three foot of water. And that is a piece of advice I like to give to everybody who want to target big trout. I've noticed on these lakes when I'm out ice fishing them, I go out to that deep water. I'm going to catch all those fish. The uh, I'm going to catch all the first year plants out there. They're out there in that deep water. And, uh, for some reason, those big fish tend to hold shallower, I find. Now, it's not saying I don't find big fish out in deep water, but a lot of times I'm fishing in one to five foot of water, really looking for those big fish. Now, they're not as frequent. Today, I've gotten to a nice group of them. Yeah, so when I'm looking for those big fish, oops, there's another one. There you go, got another one. Look at that, man. It's just school, a big school of them just came through. They're hanging tight here. Dude, that one's not as big. All right, back in the hole you go. There he goes. So as I was saying, yeah, these big fish will move around in loose schools shallow, and it seems to, I don't know if they bully the smaller fish out to the deeper water, but they're up cruising those weed beds looking for insects, especially when we just got ice formation. There's... Uh, still a lot of green vegetation down there and very productive. So there'll be lots of insects and invertebrates for them to feed on. It's crazy how many there came through there in like the last 10 minutes. I was here for 20 minutes. I saw nothing before. So you just never know. Oh, that's a nice one. There we go. Got him. Big buck. I prefer them to go fight me underneath the ice a little bit. Now, one of the major problems you're going to find when trying to find large trout through the ice is this guy keeps going when coming up tail first is uh, overstocking. That's a really serious issue in a lot of the Northwest states. In fact, most of the Western states, these state agencies seem to be convinced that all we want to do is catch a bunch of dinky fish um, quickly and go home when. In reality, if you can find those lakes that are small in size with low stocking rates, I mean, I'm talking like less than 100 fish per acre, you're going to find big fish. Those tend to be like selective gear rules lakes or lakes with special like no bait regulations and things like that. That also keeps the amount of pressure down on them because a lot of guys want to go out and drown worms and power bait. And they can't do that. They're not going to go fish the lake. All right, here we go. This guy's a chunker. He's fat. But his fins are all beat up from false spawning. Fish. Ooh, I missed him. Dang it. There we go. Got him. <laughs> that was cool watching him take it. Now, another thing you might look for, especially because states are very generous in making um, their stocking report data available to the public, at least most are, is you could fish lakes that are stocked with large fish. Now, that's less common because it costs more money for them to grow big fish, and they typically don't like to do a lot of stocking with large fish. Especially in Oregon and Washington, they tend to do a lot of put and grow. So fish that are quarter, half pound, put them in the lake, especially in the fall, let them grow over the winter a little bit, put on some weight for the spring. And then likewise, they usually do a similar plant in the spring, fish get fat over the summer so you can definitely target those lakes that have uh bigger fish and that's going to give you an advantage but in in my uh i personally prefer to put i personally prefer to target those lakes where there's uh fish are put out a smaller size and allowed to grow even like fingerling lakes um especially if they're a low stocking rate will produce really healthy robust trout this is a really nice fish here probably one of the better looking bucks I've had today. A lot of the bucks are torn up right now because they're false spawning since uh, brook trout are false spawners. They've been spilling the milt and uh, dumping some roe too from the hens. There we go. Really nice fish. Oh, I hate the slushy northwest ice fishing though. 
it's a uh, always a bit of a struggle I'm trying to stay dry it's cold but it's not dry all right get him back here he goes that was close there we go got him oh it's a big buck and this might be a nice way to end the day is this big monster buck here Oh, he's feisty. <laughs> a lot of head shaking. I really like the colors on him. It's kind of a golden color. So that's the main things I recommend looking for. If you want to find big trout through the ice, small, productive lakes that are mostly shallow, low stalking rates, low pressure. Low pressure might come from being isolated or difficult to access or because the regulations deter people from fishing it. And then finally, if you're fortunate enough to find a lake nearby that's stocked with big fish, that's a good way too, uh, but less common. And don't be afraid to fish shallow. Uh, like I said, um, most of the fish I've caught today, have, all the fish I've caught today have been in under four foot of water. Um, I could go out deep, but why do I need to when the fish are up here feeding shallow, especially after first ice, because there's still a lot of productivity going on underneath the ice in those shallow areas. Still some photosynthesis, still lots of bugs active, as I showed you on the camera. All right. Big old buckaroo. All right, guys, nice fish. Get him back and call it a day. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I'll see you out on the ice next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder.